the toy that has been around forever and has probably never been a kid's favorite. But if Nintendo was able to make a video game out of coloring books, then it was just a matter of time before the Marvel games started too. The 1980s graced us with the presence of one of the greats though, Marvel Madness. All hail the Marvel King. Seriously, if you're going to make a Marvel game, this was how to do it. Fast paced, vacuums, bad acid trips, and of course, silly mode, where everything you know is wrong. I'm actually not sure if a Marvel game could ever top this, but leave it to companies to try, year after year. I'm not sure why there was such an obsession with these Marvel games, but this year is no different. And enter in Grid Mania. With Grid Mania, they take the proven formula of Marvel Madness and strip it of all the exciting parts. Wackiness, gone. Fast-paced action, gone. Sweeping brooms, gone. Angry hammers, gone. And all these things get replaced with a dark, serious puzzle game that just happens to feature marbles. It's like Marvel Madness got the DC treatment. And just like the DC treatment, the results aren't necessarily bad, but boring. Now that would be a good word for it. Grid Mania has four different game modes. Casual Puzzle, Quick Challenge, Grid Madness, and Chain Reaction. Casual Puzzle has you simply matching up the right color marble and the corresponding color. You have to move a whole row at a time as you attempt to complete it. Sort of like how a Rubik's Cube functions. The puzzles get genuinely hard as you progress, which makes you think a bit, but I can't say this mode is fun. It feels closer to being annoyed and frustrated than anything. Also, sort of like a Rubik's. Ruby. Quick challenge is almost the same as casual mode, but now you have a limited number of moves to solve the puzzle. This makes the game a slower experience as you ponder what moves the developer wants you to make, because slower is what an already slow game needed. Grid Madness, where they had the audacity to use the word madness in an attempt to honor the Marble King. Sick. In this mode, the tiles shade colors when you connect three balls of light color over them. The goal is to shade the whole level. This is probably the most relaxing of the four modes because it's the easiest. Chain reaction is the final mode and the most frustrating. You have to connect chains of balls together and get them to also align over the corresponding colors. If this game is sort of sounding boring to you, then there's a reason for that. Because this game is mind-numbing for the masses. I am sure that this game appeals to a small group of people out there somewhere. For the majority of gaming populations, this game is definitely a miss. Sorry. The next game this week is Grab Lab, a wacky puzzle game that's just difficult enough to keep you engaged, but never overbearing. You get to play as this old goofy scientist who happens to have a bionic leg to climb walls and a bionic arm that allows him to traverse the level from side to side to collect test tubes. Seems like they took some inspiration from an NES game on this as well. You can only move in one direction and there are plenty of spikes and death traps to avoid. The levels start off pretty basic but grow increasingly more complex and difficult as you progress. Some levels do depend on split-second reactions that will force you to retry the level multiple times. But what kind of game would it be if you could easily defeat every level the first try? There is not a ton of variety to this game, and more of a time killer than an engaging experience. But it's not a bad game, it's just a simple, yet fun experience. So which of these games is going to get to advance? Neither of these titles are going to be games you'd want to sink hours into, but at the same time, neither of them are truly bad games. They're both puzzle games that are fairly simple to play. Grid Mania does offer more game modes, but most of the game looks exactly the same and boredom does set in pretty quickly. Grab Lab has fewer game modes, 
but better aesthetics and the overall fun of the game doesn't diminish quite as quickly. Depending on your puzzle game taste, neither of these games would be a waste of 50 cents. However, for this round, Grab Lab is going to advance. The wackiness of the game does keep you more invested in the puzzles. Also, the puzzles have a slower increase in difficulty to keep you interested in the game for longer with less frustration. So congratulations to Grab Lab. We'll see if you can end up grabbing the ultimate title as the contest progresses. Thanks again for watching and tune in next episode for Champion of the Cheap Part 6. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.